Hi everyone, it's Stephanie with a video from My Favorite Things. For this month's release, I created a card using the Ken Oliver Color Burst Powders to create a cool background effect to use with some of the new release stamps. So in this video, I'm just going to be sharing how I created this background. So if you're not familiar, Color Burst are just powders that come in these kind of eyedropper looking bottles and they are concentrated pigment powders. So when they come in contact with water, they give amazing, very pigmented watercolor effects and the sky is the limit with these powders you can create so many different um, fun backgrounds and like tie-dyed looks and just a ton of different options with these powders um, I will warn you now they are one addictive and they are two kind of messy so if you don't mind getting a little bit messy on your fingers and you don't mind having a slight addiction with something then I definitely suggest trying these out so to start off, I just adhered a watercolor panel to a piece of board there, and I just used painter's tape, and that's going to hold this down. And I went ahead and picked out the colors that I'm going to be using for my background here. So I'm going to be using lemon yellow and orange first, and that's going to be what I'm going to do to create kind of the glow that's going to go behind the fire that's eventually going to be on the card design. So like I said, they're just kind of like water or eyedropper type bottle looking things. Um, and to use these, you can do two, one of two things. You can either put them onto the paper dry and then add water, or you can put water on your paper first and then add the color burst on top. So for this one here, I'm adding some water to my background. I'm not adding a ton. I just want the background kind of damp so that the powder has something to stick to when I put it onto the surface, but I don't want it to like really move around. So I didn't put a ton of water. I want to be able to add the water after to really make the powder move. So you can see here, I've just added some of the yellow. You can either slightly squeeze the bottle or just kind of tap it and the color will come out. And just keep in mind that this powder, you don't need a lot to make really great color. So just kind of play around with it until you're familiar and you're comfortable with how much you need to use. So I'm just kind of going around into a little area here and dabbing the bottle so that this pigment falls on. And you can see it's all yellow in this area here. And then once I finish with the yellow, I'm going to go ahead and add water. Like I said, um, this is still really powdery at this point, and I want it to really spread around and be a lot more watercolor looking. So you can see here I'm adding the water. And then now I want to add some orange color. So I'm just using the orange color burst powder and just adding it to the bottom area of the yellow and then just spraying it heavily with water. And you can see how that color is kind of moving all over now. So now I'm going to go ahead and move into the sky area. So I'm going to be using the ultramarine blue and the violet colors to do the sky. I'm putting the blue on first and kind of concentrating it mostly above the yellow area, but also a little bit beside. And then I also added some purple and you can see there the purple came out a lot more than I wanted. So I just used a baby wipe and kind of dabbed it before I went ahead and added more water. And that's just going to pull up some of that pigment so I don't have as much on the card base when I add the water. So now you can see I've added more water and I'm just taking a baby wipe and kind of dabbing it all over the surface to pick up a lot of that pigment. And you can see the color of the baby wipe. It's uh, really picking, picking up the pigment and it's very concentrated like I said. So you just want to be careful when you're doing this that you rotate your baby wipe and you don't kind of add the purple and blue into the yellow area by accident. And then um, once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and just keep adding or taking away color. And that's what I like about these is the more water you put, the more um, the more you can kind of play around and move the color to your liking and get it the consistency you want it and in the area you want it. So you can see here as I'm adding the yellow and the blues, it's kind of mixing together and creating a little bit of a green halo there which I don't mind at all. I like the overall look of that, but I don't want a lot of that green. So I just kind of work on it and kind of add and take away color and water until I kind of pull out a lot of the green that I don't want and get it more looking like the glow of a fire, which is what I was intending to do. So like I said, as you can see, as I add the water, where the concentrated areas are, if there's little splotches that are really dark that you don't really want, you can just set your paper towel or your baby wipe on top and it will absorb that water right up and bring out some of that colors to lighten it up a bit. And then you can kind of drag the paper towel around to move the color to wherever you want it to be. So now I'm kind of happy with what I have. It's kind of what I was going for. So I'm just taking a heat gun and I'm going to add heat to this to dry it. And you, this is completely optional. If you have the time and the patience, feel free to let it air dry and uh, do it that way. But I usually don't have the patience to wait. So I like to dry it with my heat tool. 
And then I just take a paper towel and continue to dab it if I have any problems where there's like pools of water that don't want to dry very quickly. And then you can see there I have some really dark pieces of the blue. And even though I've partially dried this area, feel free. You can just add more water again and just use your paper towel once again to kind of pick that color up. And you can lighten it and don't have to worry about having those areas that are just kind of darker than you wanted. So there's a lot of playroom with these powders and you can definitely just kind of keep tweaking them until you get exactly what you want. So now that I've kind of finished what I've the background and I'm happy with the color, I'm going ahead and trying to remove this painter's tape. It's a little bit sticky. And then I have this great background piece finished here. It's still kind of damp, so I'm just going to continue to dry it with my heat tool. And you can see your fingers get pretty um, covered in ink. This is actually not too bad, so I did pretty good on this one. Um, but now you can see here I have this really great background look. And I'm just going to continue to dry it with my heat tool. And then once I have it completely dry, I went ahead and actually assembled the card. So I didn't share that part in the video. I just wanted to mainly share how to create the background. But to finish it off, I just die cut it with a stitched rectangle die, did my stamped images and colored them, and then added everything to the card piece. And it looks like I have this great night sky with a fiery glow. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next month.